Hello and welcome to a new video in Practical Sheets. Today we continue our inventory management system, a very basic inventory management system. Everything we have done it through Google Sheets. We haven't added any scripts or anything, but I think this will start to change in the future because when our tables and our databases start to become too big, this may not be the best way to input information and it may not be the most efficient or effective way to do it. So. What we've done last time is just building the basic sheets. There are actually just three sheets and one auxiliary sheet. One for the product, one for the inputs and the outputs, and one for the stock. We've added some options on the product so we can customize them a bit more and know more about our products. In our case, we have category, size, colors, the cost and the price. And in our inputs output, we, we choose the reference and then it automatically brings the name of the product, we choose the input and output. And once we have the units, it also brings the cost or the price, depending if it's an input or output. And also automatically it multiplies to know the total amount. And then we choose the date. Maybe this is not the best order. Maybe the best order would be the date first. I don't know. And finally, we have the stock where it's just a summary of the input, the output, how much stock we have left and how much does this stock cost? So. There are a lot of more things we can do to this. What we're going to do today is to make it more easy to input the product as well as the inputs and output. So it may be better to insert new inputs or output in the first row or in the second row. Because once we have a lot of things, then we need to always go to the last one and do it. So to do this, we need to insert one row above. It's very important to insert one row above the three and not one row below the one to completely different things. If I insert one row above, then I keep my validations. The bad news is that it don't, it doesn't keep my formulas. Okay. If I insert one row below, it not only does not keep my formulas, but it does not give me my data validation. So this is very bad because I need to then copy and paste and it doesn't work at all. So I know that I need to insert a row above, but I don't want to insert one row above and then need to drag my formulas. So there must be a way for the formulas to be a bit more strong, robust, that I don't have to drag them down. For example, you have seen in the last videos that if I change anything in my formula, then I have to drag it down to the last row. So we're going to do something that is called array formula. An array formula is a formula that we write it in the first cell, but we tell the formula how many cells or how many rows or how many columns do I want to drag this down. So even though we write the formula in just one cell, it occupies a lot of cells. Let's see this in action too. To understand it better. So first I'm going to delete all these column product. I'm just going to leave the first one, this one here. I'm going to tell my VLOOKUP to go from A2 up to, let's do it for, for our example, just to A5. Maybe just for being extra sure, let's block this product with F4. And let's press enter. I'm not going to accept my suggestions. So here, nothing happens. It's the same as if I hadn't add this A5. But if I stand here and I do Control Shift Enter, you can see that it automatically adds this array formula. Let's press enter again. And you can see that again, automatically here, to the untrained eye, this was written manually. But we know that this comes from this formula. If I delete this formula, I delete also these three other cells. So this is what an array formula does. Okay. So what we're going to do is to not limit ourselves to A5, but leave it open to A. And given that we have our if error already in place, if we press enter, then you can see that it works very nicely, even though 
here it seems again that we don't have a formula. So if I put anything here, it automatically calculates my new formula in my new row. Okay, so it looks good. The last thing I need to do, because if I, again, insert one row above, I still don't have my formula. So what I need to do is drag this up to my product. So I'm going to drag my array formula one cell up, delete this formula, and I can see that it works really nice. In this case, I didn't have to do anything because when I do a VLOOKUP of ref here, I get product, the name product, so it works perfectly, but it won't work this good in the other formulas. So we will just need to adjust a couple of things in the other formulas. So what you see here is that my formula resides or lives in the first row, in the header row. So now if I add a new row and I add a new reference, you can see that here it automatically works because my formula is here and this will never change. So I'm not depending on any particular row or cell, but only on my header. So this is what I have to guard with my life, my header, because this is where my formulas are going to reside. So one thing to take into account or to know about these array formulas is that these don't work with every function, with every formula. You need to be careful. You need to be creative when we start to do some more advanced formulas because this doesn't work with every formula. It doesn't work with the filter function, with the sum ifs function, with the index function. There are many functions that won't work, particularly other array functions or array type functions. It will have some conflict and we need to be careful. Even the sum function that looks very harmless, it may have some conflicts with the array formula. So it's just to be careful and to reformulate our functions or formulas sometimes, but this is a very nice tool to have and to know. So let's do this for the other ones. Let's do this for our cost price. So let's read our whole formula. So it, it says if error, then if C2 is input, so I'm going to say if C2 up to C is input, then do the VLOOKUP from A2 to A. Let's freeze this with a four, and then our VLOOKUP from A2 to A. Let's freeze again this with a four. We'll stand here. Let's press Ctrl Shift Enter and Enter again. So the problem I have here is that I have to erase the other formulas I have. So again, it's working very nice just with this formula. And let's say that in the blanks, it continues to work great. And we're going to drag it down again and delete this. So here is where I can start to have some problem because it says price normally. And I had before price slash cost or cost slash price, however you prefer. So I can change this by saying that if the row of the cell I'm in, let's say from A1 to A is one, that is if we're standing in the row number one, then just leave it, just put my header that is cost slash price. And if not, then I can proceed with my format. Maybe I can put this better before my if error. Now it works great. And you can see here, I don't have any formulas. My All my functions and formulas are here in my header. The same for my total. That is the other formula I have. So I'm going to push this up to A and this will be D2 to D and E2 to E. We control shift enter, enter. Let's delete our, all of our other formulas. It works good. We can drag this up, delete this first one. And again, before the if, I can say that if row for A1 to A is one, then put my header that I think it was called total or total amount. If not, do the formula as I had it before. That's it. So now 
if I insert the row and I put some data here and some data here and some data here, then everything works very nice and I don't have to worry about dragging any formula. And I want to, to make it clear where do I have formulas. I like to do this, it's, it's just a personal thing. For example, here, here, and here, everything is formula. So I can put it in a light gray color, just to advise and to know that this is a formula. Even though I don't see it here, just to know that, and it's an indicator for the user to know where do we have to input information. Here, 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 and here, that's it. Maybe it's better to have the columns where we input information in the first columns, and then after that have all the columns that uh, calculate or have formulas, but we'll leave it as it is for the moment. We're just going to put some color to our headers. And I want to do a macro that inserts automatically my, my row here. So I avoid having to go here, select the row, clicking, right click, insert row above. Maybe it's easier and more indicative to have a button or a menu where I can insert my row easily. So again, stand here, extensions, macros, and record a macro. We're going to leave it in use absolute references. I'm going to insert a row above. That's everything my macro needs, but I may need to enter and to enter to my script editor and just check that everything works fine. Let's save it and call this insert new row above. We can give, give this a number, control shift one to make it easier to do. Let's edit our script. And we can see it's just going to my A2 cell and inserting a row before. I don't need to activate anything, so I can delete this. Save it. And let's just delete this row and test that our macro works great. Extension, macros, and inserting row above. The first time that I play it, it will ask for some authorizations. Let's just allow and play again. This is great. The good thing about this insert new row is that it will work in other sheets as well. So I can say here extensions, macros, and insert new row above. It will also work. So it's nice. So in my stock, I don't have to change anything. For the moment, nothing will change. I could also do some array formulas here, but it's not necessary for the moment. And as I told you, for example, it doesn't work with some ifs. So we're going to have to, to become a bit creative with our formulas to be able to have our array formulas here. It can be done, but I will leave it for next videos. The last thing I want to do in this video is to have some indication here where this, when the stock is low. For example, let's, I'm going to buy some of this one, three of this one, two here, and then one other day. And you can see that now I have it in zero. So it may be nice to have just a band, a color band to let me know that this is out of stock and that's it. And when it's in one or in two, have it in another color to to warn me that it's about to end the stock. So we're going to do this with a simple conditional formatting. We're going to choose, we may choose all the table. Let's go to format, the conditional formatting. We're going to have a, a custom formula that says, given that we're starting in the row one, we need to do our formula starting in the row one. So we're going to say that we need to always in custom formulas, we need to put a condition that returns true or false. So our condition will be the form the cell E1 equals to zero. And let's just block 
the E, putting a dollar sign before the column, just the column because I want to, to evaluate in all the rows, in each row. So if it's zero and that's it, that's my custom formula. Then I could put this in a red, in light red maybe. And maybe bold and that's it. I could add another rule that is based on this one, but is that E1, let's say it's less than two, for example, or three. That if it's less than three, then just put it in a yellow, just for me to, to be warned. Let's click done. We have our two custom conditional formatting. And let's buy one in this, for example. Just to check that this is working automatically. See? And here, automatically, it colors it in yellow to know that this is a low stock. So I'm going to put some format here again, just a, a quirk of mine to have this and lock freeze this first row as we did in the last video. And that's it. I think our, our inventory management is taking more form each time. There are a lot of things we need to do to make it better, but I'll leave it as it is for now and then I'll wait for your suggestions to, to change something. As always, you can find the template in the Patreon page so you don't have to start from scratch. And if you like this, please subscribe and hit the notification button so that you know when a new video pops up. Thank you so much. See you next time.